So Marsh and I work as a team. We luck feel lucky to be able to do that. But any day that you see or hear an owl is pretty special. Here's an owl that showed up in our backyard and I photographed it up against the sun. And this is a barred owl. And we're going to look at the barred owl for a minute because it shows us how owls are different than any other kind of bird. You can tell if a bird is an owl. There's three things that I look for to see if a bird is an owl. Number one, owls have really big heads. Look at their head. Their heads are as wide as their body. Most birds have small heads, but not owls. Owls have big heads. The second thing you'll notice about owls, owls have eyes on the front of their face, just like you do. Most birds, eyes on the side. You think about pigeons or blue jays or starlings, they have eyes on the side. And then the third way to see if it's an owl, owls stand upright. Most other birds stand horizontally. You might also notice though, owls have sharp claws. We call those claws talons. So owls have talons, but they're not the only bird that has talons. Do you think this is an owl? No. You're right, it's not an owl. This is a hawk. But like an owl, hawks have hooked beaks and sharp talons. But look at the size of the head. It's tiny. It has a little head. So it's not a big-headed owl. Let's go back to the big-headed owls. All right. The barred owl gets its name from these feathers right here. These are bars. Vertical feathers like these are stripes. So we have bars and stripes. But up here on the face, we have special feathers that encircle each eye. And the ears on an owl are hidden right in here, right behind the eyes. And if you look at these special feathers that go around the eyes, they're called facial discs. And they help the owl hear. This is how it works. If you want to hear like an owl, it's pretty easy. We can do this on your own head. Take your hands, hold them up, palms forward, cup your hands, and then put each hand behind each ear. And suddenly you've extended your ears and you can hear better by doing that. And that allows owls to hear better too. Those feathers extend the ears and they can hear tiny little noises that you and I might not even be able to hear. All right. Finding an owl is always a challenge. They usually come out at night, but this one was sunbathing on a winter day. And once it flew off, I noticed it left behind a clue that it had been there. What's the clue in the picture you might see? Raise your hand if you have an idea. What do you think? What's the clue? Well, I think that maybe they a, feather. a feather? I don't see any feathers in the picture. It's a good idea, but I don't see any feathers. What do you think? It's what? Bird poop? You're exactly right. Yeah. There's your clue right there. Now, owl poop has a special name. We call owl poop whitewash. And here's what happens. When owls are sleeping during the day, up on a branch, they drop a lot of whitewash. It lands on a branch or it lands on the ground. Boys and girls, whitewash is your friend. Whitewash helps you figure out where owls are. So if you're in the woods and you see whitewash on the ground, look up and the owl that did it might be above you up in a tree. Now if you look closely at this tree, we see lots of whitewash on the branches and on the ground. But boys and girls, there's a second clue in this picture that owls have been here. So we have whitewash here, but what's the second clue on the ground that you might see? What do you think? Yeah, what are these things called? It's not poop. What's it called? It's not whitewash. These things here are not whitewash. This is the whitewash here. These things are called pellets, and they come out of the bird's mouth. 
Now you'll say ooh at first, but once you get to know a pellet, they become, oh, interesting. More on that in a minute. All right. So, if you look closely at this photo, we see that this great gray owl has pounced on a mouse. See the tail sticking out? The way that owls sneak up on mice, the secret is in their feathers. If we look at an owl's wing feather up close, we see that it has certain features that allow the feather to fly quietly. So the edge of the feather is fringed like a comb. The top of the feather is like velvet or satin. It's very soft. So when that feather moves through the air on an owl's wing, it doesn't make any noise. Owls can fly silently. Compare that to a goose feather. Here's a Canada goose feather. Look at the difference. It has a hard straight edge. It's slippery, it's shiny on top. And when a goose flies, you hear, you hear wind noise coming off the wing. But you know what? Geese don't need to sneak up on their food because when a goose lands out on the soccer field, it's eating grass. Do you need to sneak up on grass to eat more? No. Can grass run away? No, of course not. All right. Now, owls don't come in bright colors. You're not going to see hot pink or electric blue. You're going to see kind of dull colors like white, gray, brown, black. Nothing too flashy. And they blend in with their surroundings. So we call that camouflage. So the pattern and the color of owls helps them be camouflaged with their surroundings. They like to blend in. Strongest part of an owl is its feet. Here's a snowy owl that Marsh is holding. And look at the size of the talons. Big, sharp talons on a snowy owl. They can squeeze stronger than a human. So yeah, that's why Marsha wears a very big leather glove to protect her hands against those sharp talons. All right. This is what an owl pellet looks like. Now this does not come out of the rear end. This is not poop. This is a pellet that comes out of the mouth. And so if you are an owl, and you ate a mouse for supper, 12 hours after you ate the mouse, you would cough up one of these. And this pellet contains all the bones and fur and skulls from the animal that they ate. So there's a skull, there's a leg bone, and all this fur. And if you took that apart, you would find all the bones of that animal. So you can touch pellets, but just remember, just remember you want to wash your hands after you touch them before you touch your food or touch your eyes or your mouth. And look what Marsha found in this pellet. She found the complete skull of a little animal called a vole. V-O-L-E. And this is what the vole looked like before the owl ate it. So this is probably the number one favorite food of an owl, a meadow vole. So I'm going to ask you to turn your voices off while we're doing the slides, okay? I know it's exciting, but let's listen rather than talk. So this pellet I found underneath a pine tree near my house. And I love this pellet. This is my favorite owl pellet that I've ever found. Here's why it's my favorite. I stared at this pellet for five minutes before I figured out what it was telling me. Over here, we have squirrel bones, which is interesting, but not unusual because owls eat a lot of squirrels. Over here, this is where it gets really interesting. That is a fish scale. That's the backbone of a fish, and that's the rib of a fish. This owl was eating both fish 
and meat. I've never seen an owl eat a fish. There's the evidence. There's the proof. But if you think about it, some animals that owls eat don't have skeletons, don't have bones, like earthworm or slug or caterpillar. If they eat any of those things, they're not going to show up in the pellet. If they eat a snake, do you think that will show up in the pellet? It will because snakes have bones. Snakes have skeletons. All right, let's go find an owl. We need to go to where they live. Do you think you'll find owls in the parking lot at the mall? No. No. You need to go to where there's food and shelter for them. We know there's food here because if you look closely, we see little tunnels through the grasses made by mice and voles. And check this, they gnawed the bark off of the tree roots. So there's hundreds of rodents in this field. If you were a hungry owl, you'd want to come in, fly here, land on a mouse or a vole, fly up into the pine tree and eat it, and then take a long nap. Marsha and I showed up in this field with our binoculars, and we found eight different kinds of owls. We found big great gray owls sleeping back here and snowy owl flying around the field and little cute sawet owls roosting over here and we had five other different types of owls. So this, this is great habitat for an owl. Summertime, this is where you would find owls near an old field next to the woods. Here's an old barn. Great places for owls to find food and shelter. Well, this is Lawrence's most commonly heard owl, but it's not really an owl, it's a morning dove. But a lot of people, when they hear that bird, they think it's an owl, and it's not. It's a morning dove. You can tell it's not an owl, though, because does it have a big head? No. Does it stand upright? No. Does it have eyes on the front? No. So we know it's not an owl. Great horned owl. There's Marsha imitating the call back there. Ooh, 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 ooh. The great horned owl is found here in Lawrence. Anywhere you have trees, you might have great horned owls. And you can identify them by their big size, black and yellow eyes, and big ear tufts on their head. Now, they're found all across the United States in every state except Hawaii. So if you go to California or Texas or Florida or Lawrence, you could see great horned owls. This one was in California up in a cave on a cliff. And what was my big clue in finding this owl? The poop, yeah. The whitewash. Look at all that whitewash. If you see that much whitewash, I hope you get excited because you're going to see something interesting like an eagle, a hawk, a falcon, or in this case, an owl. All right, well, here in Lawrence, you have something happening that most towns never get to experience. Every night in the winter, thousands of crows fly into Lawrence and spend the night sleeping somewhere in the city. And they estimate it could be 20 to 30,000 crows do this every night in Lawrence. This morning, when we were coming into your school over here, guess what I saw flying over your school? Two different kinds of crows. And when crows find owls, they get very upset because they know that owls can eat crows. So. If you see crows going crazy, take a moment to study them and see what they're upset about, and they may be finding a great horned owl or maybe a barred owl that you could get to see because the crows pointed it out for you. Now, how many owls are in this photo? There's the second one. So there's the mother. That's her ear tuft. Some of you spotted it, I know. She's sitting on the eggs in the nest, keeping them warm. 
Here's the father, the male, looking straight over his back. Now this nest, I think you would agree, is a pretty nice looking nest. Too bad they didn't build it. Owls don't build their own nests. Owls reuse other birds' nests. Owls are the original recyclers. They reuse other birds' nests. This was built by a red-tailed hawk. Here's a nest built by a crow. Look who's in it. An owl. Here's a nest built by a great blue heron, and look who's in it. A great blue heron. But you know what? The following year, a great horned owl might come in and reuse that nest. Baby great horned owls look pretty cute. Check it out. She is looking straight over her back. That's her tail, right? Her head is turned straight over her back. And her brother started to hiss at me when I took his picture. I got a nice picture of his tongue there. But look at the size of his mouth. Even though he's only seven weeks old, he could swallow a chipmunk whole. Winter time is a hard time for owls. You know, if the snow is deep, they may have trouble getting through the snow to get food like mice and voles under the snow. So in the winter, sometimes owls can starve. Winter can be a harsh time. This great horned owl, however, has captured a weasel. You can see it's holding onto the head of the weasel, the part that could bite, and owls do not want to be bitten. So they grab their, their meal by the head and neck to kill it quickly, and then they often eat the head first. So do owls, do owls eat acorns? No, owls don't eat anything from a plant. They only eat meat. And so owls obviously eat chipmunks. But here we see the flow of energy. We call this a food chain. Starts with sunlight. Sunlight hits the oak tree leaves, which store some energy in an acorn. And then an animal like a chipmunk eats the acorn. And then a meat eater or carnivore like an owl would eat the chipmunk. So owls are carnivores. Owls are apex predators. Once in a while, once in a while, owls, great horned owls will eat skunks. And you know what? It's not a problem because guess what? Owls have a lousy sense of smell. We don't think they smell, if at all, they don't smell very well at all. And they will eat skunks, and on occasion, they will eat small cats and dogs. So, here's what you do. If you have a cat, try to keep it indoors. Don't let it out. Outdoor cats are in great danger from owls, coyotes, hawks, and fishers. Not to mention, they might get run over by a car. So indoors is a safe place for cats. Outdoors is a very dangerous place. And we are going to meet some owls. Now, the owls are not our pets. We have to have a U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service license from the federal government and different state licenses just to have the owls that we have. We're going to start with the two little owls. They're so cute. And these are not babies. These are full-grown adult owls. And once Marsha turns around, we'll show you who they are. So this owl on this side is the saw wet owl, northern saw wet owl. And this owl over here is the eastern screech owl. And let's listen. The screech owl has something to say. What's the matter? Are we cranky? Do we wake you? Would you rather be asleep? I think we woke her up. Because when are owls normally asleep? During the day, right. So the screech owl, that is a complaining call of a screech owl. You're not likely to hear that in the wild, but if you go out in the, in, at night to listen for owls, what's the call that they might hear, Marsha? Oh, oh. 
I need a volunteer to help us with that call. How about right here? Come on up. And we'll get you on another one. So you can come up right now. You can stand right in front of Marsha. Right in front. Right in front. Right in front of her. Go ahead. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. Okay, good. And what's your name? Alexandra. Okay, Alexandra. We're going to surround Alexandra with two owls. And they may stare at you, Alexandra. I hope you don't mind. She doesn't seem to mind. And Alexandra, we're going to do the screech owl call, which kind of sounds like a little horse. It sounds like a little horse, Winnie. Marsha, how does it go again? <laughs> Alexandra, you think you can try that? Can you do it a little longer? <laughs> oh, big wing flap for Alexandra. That was excellent. Nicely done. You want to give one last look at the screech owl over on your right? There you go. And you get... Oh, remember, no screaming. Yeah. Alexandra, you are very brave. Nice job. One more wing flap for Alexandra, and you can head back to your seat. Thank you. All right. Well, the sawwet owl, this little owl, the cutest owl ever, has a different call. She sounds more like a little truck backing up in the woods. She toots and rather than hoots. It goes like this. So I need a volunteer that can whistle. Can you whistle? Come on up. Okay, you can stand right where Alexandra was standing. That's okay. Deep breath. Just relax. What's your name? Elena. Elena? Okay. Okay, Elena, you have the cutest owl to do. And I'll hold the microphone under your chin. And you, could, you said you could whistle, right? So why don't you wet your whistle right now. And it goes like this. It's a tooting call. It goes... Okay, so you ready? Can you do that for like 20 minutes without stopping? Because I saw what owl can. That was excellent. Nice job. Big wing flaps. Yeah. Really well done. Thanks for coming up. The screech owl is the most common owl here in Lawrence. And yet, I bet most of you have never seen one. The reason they're hard to find, they live in holes and trees. So we call those holes cavities. So if you have trees in your neighborhood, or at a park, or along the river, or at a cemetery, check the trees that have holes in them, and you might see a little owl face peeking out of that hole at you. The sawwet owl does not live in Lawrence in the summer. They're only here in the fall and winter but you won't see them here in the summer. So, I've got a question for you. You can raise your hand if you have an idea. How much do you think the little sawwet owl weighs? How much do you think it weighs? Uh, about uh, a couple of times. A couple of pounds? That's a good guess, but it's way too much. What would you say? Nine? Nine what? Nine pounds. What's less than two pounds? Because he said two pounds. So what would be smaller than two pounds? Less than two. One. One pound is a good guess, but it's still too much. Zero. What's less than one? What's less than one? What is it? Negative zero. Negative zero? Oh, you're blowing my mind here. It has to be more than zero, but less than one. What do you think? Let's listen. Two, two pounds. They weigh, the sawwet owl weighs a quarter pound, about the same as a hamburger. The screech owl weighs just under half a pound. So they don't weigh very much, they're lightweight. Well, owls are good at blinking. They have three eyelids on each eye. How many eyelids do you have on your eye, each eye? Two. So here's how it works with an owl. 
An owl's upper eyelid comes down from blinking. An owl's lower eyelid comes up when they're sleeping. And the owl's number three eyelid comes across like a windshield wiper. And that third eyelid is called a nictitating membrane. And you can see it on the screech owl when he blinks. When she blinks, I should say, it's a she. So, a quick story about these two owls. Oh, Brian, we need you. The Sawet owl has kind of a sad story. A year and a half ago, she was found next to the road in Revere, Massachusetts, with a broken wing, and her head was permanently turned upside down. She had been hit by a car. Hit by a car. Can we all sit on our bottoms? Crisscross so people behind can see okay? Like you're doing. And so she had a broken wing and her head was upside down. And so someone found her badly injured and brought her to the animal hospital. And she went into rehab for four months. And they fixed the wing so she can fly now, but not perfectly. And her head slowly went from upside down to right side up. And so it's back to normal now. The screech owl, on the other hand, we know is almost six years old. And she was part of a scientific study. And the scientists were studying a certain disease called West Nile virus. And after the study ended, the scientists had 86 screech owls that needed a home. And we adopted four of those 86. So this is one of the four that we adopted. And they'll live with us their whole life. So she can live into her 20s. And this owl might live in to be 18 or 20. We don't know how old the Sawat owl is right now. Could be five, could be 10, we don't know. But I'm gonna bring out the mystery bird next, mystery raptor. So, you'll notice, remember that owls have big heads, as wide as their bodies. Is this an owl? It's not an owl, right? This is a type of falcon, and this is called an American kestrel. And you'll notice that her wings are pointed. She is built for fast flight. Owls have rounded wings. Falcons, like this kestrel, have pointed wings for fast flying. She eats a lot of the same things, though, as an owl. She eats insects like grasshoppers and dragonflies, and she eats mice. And so she can't get away, you don't need to worry. Because she's, she's got wearing these leather straps around her feet, around her legs. She doesn't fly away, yep. And this is a female. If we look at her wing, see how it's rusty brown? That tells us this is a female or a girl. If this was a boy or a male, the wing would be blue-gray colored. Just like the top of her head, that color. You have a question? Okay, nice and loud. Would the birds poop on your, le on your hands? Would the bird poop on my hand? Yes, it's possible. But you know what, I'm not worried because I have Brian standing by with a spray bottle. Yeah, and bird poop, you know, it comes off. It's not the end of the world if they poop on your hand. I've had, I've had her poop on my hand before. All right, question over here. <clears throat> How do you know if it's a female? Well, that's, her wings are rusty brown. If this was a male, they'd be blue, blue-gray. So we can tell by the color. Like a blue jay? Well, not quite that blue, but it would be the color blue-gray that you see on the top of her head. That would be the color of the wing if it was a boy or a male. Sometimes. Sometimes they they actually fly that fast, but you need sometimes they sometimes they catch them and they and they don't go away. So you so they can so they everyone can see them. So you 
you've you've had a good view of these before? You've seen one before? No, be, no, because I I in Lawrence I I moved in my new home. But I in my old home I there's a big tree, yeah. and then there's a hole in it, and I saw one. Well, keep an eye on that hole because that's where these birds will nest in holes and trees, and kestrels do nest in Lawrence. I can't catch them because I don't got I I don't got no gloves for it. Yeah, that's okay. You don't need to catch them. You can just watch them. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna tuck her back. We're gonna go with a bigger owl now. So this is a barred owl. B-A-R-R-E-D, barred owl. It gets its name from those feathers across the chest. Those are called bars. And this is an owl you could see in Lawrence in the winter. They come in the, into the city in the winter to hunt mice and rats. Here, then in the summer, they would move out into the woodlands to breed and have their babies. But it has an eight note call. Barred owls have a really impressive call. It goes like this. It's eight notes. It goes woo, 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 woo. Please don't scream. There's no need to scream. He can't get away. He can't not leave the hand. So I need someone that's willing to help me do that call. I need a volunteer. All right, and what's your name? Joe Casey. Joe Casey and Valentina. Valentina. So, so ladies, we're going to have you both do the call at the same time. You're going to have to both lean into the microphone. It's eight notes, and an easy way to remember it is if you put words to it, it sounds like, who cooks for you? Who cooks for you all? <laughs> so I'll do it, and then you guys can try it, all right? Woo, 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 woo. Woo, 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 woo. Okay, lean in. Nice. And then the last part of the call is two notes. It goes, hoo -ah. Hoo -ah. Hoo -ah. Oh, give him a big wing flap. That was really nicely done. That was a good duet. You can head back to your seat. Marsha, would you like to add anything? So this is one of the two big owls that we have around us. The other one is the great horned owl that you're going to meet next. And what color are the barred owl's eyes? Black. Black, right. And most owls do not have black eyes. They have yellow and black eyes. This owl was also hit by a car or a truck and rescued somewhere in New Hampshire. And whoever rescued him brought him to a wildlife doctor and they realized that he had a broken right wing. <clears throat> Excuse me, can you see how his, right, his wing is kind of hanging down? Yeah. yeah, yeah, so he can't fly. And so when he was brought to the animal doctor, they waited for that, that wing to heal and after it healed, I got to, we got to adopt him. Adopt him. Your voice is fading? Okay. Um, so, did we talk about the weight of this bird? All right, Marsha, show us how deep the feathers are. Big, thick feathers. That bird's body if you had x-ray vision you looked at that bird, you'd see that the body isn't much bigger than Marsh's forearm. So knowing that, that the feathers are really deep, how much do you think that bird weighs? What would you guess? Seven pounds? Oh, ten pounds. Good guess, way too much. So what's less than ten? Listen. Nine pounds. Nine, still too much. Eight. Still too much. Eight pounds. Still too much. One hundred pounds. No. What's less than eight? Um, what's smaller than eight? Less than eight. One pound. You nailed it. Gold star for you. Yeah. One pound. 
Doesn't that bird look like it would weigh a lot more than one pound? But it's covered with lots and lots of feathers. Yeah. And birds' bones don't weigh very much because are they hollow or solid? Hollow, yeah. Yeah. Are you guys watching a feather? Where is it? Oh, you guys have good eyesight. I can't even see it. Oh, it's way up there. Wow. Is it, did that come off of this owl? Okay, I'm going to take a question over here, out in the wings. And let's listen to this question. Um, I didn't hear the, the flopping thing. You didn't hear it? Because it's quiet? Yeah, it's silent. Good, good observation. Yes? Do owls have bones? They do have bones. Yep. But how do they turn their head, head backwards? They have extra bones in their neck. You have seven in your neck. They have 14. Extra bones can turn extra far. How? Extra bones give them extra joints. And joints move. And that's how they turn their head. Why? Because they need to see behind them. Yeah. They can't move their eyes. All right, you're a hero. Okay, question here. Let's listen. Please listen. What? Um, when we went to science, we find now a bunch of, of owls. You found bones of owls? Yeah, in science. Yeah. Well, birds all have a skeleton. They have bones, as do mammals. Do insects have bones? No. Do jellyfish have bones? No. Do sharks have bones? Yeah. Actually, no. They have cartilage. What? Yeah. That was a trick question, I know. But yeah. All right. Let's, let's see who is coming out next. Quiet as mice. Let's listen and watch. This is only the sixth time he's been out to school, so he's a little nervous, so please be quiet. This is a great horned owl. And guess what? This is an owl you could see or hear any month of the year in Lawrence. Anywhere there's trees, you might have a great horned owl. Marsha, turn a little to your right so we can all see. All right. So the great horned owl has a distinctive call. I'll do it again and then all of you can do it. Go ahead. Okay, give yourselves a wing flap. This bird, this owl, has a story. He was found down on the ground with a broken wing, and he could not fly, and he was starving. We think that what happened was that he may have eaten a poisoned mouse, and that poison affected him and he lost the ability to fly. Perhaps he flew into something and got hit by a car and broke his wing. But, you know, if you have a mouse in the house, a lot of you sooner or later will have a mouse or a rat you need to get rid of. And your parents might say, oh, let's put out mouse poison. And you would say, please don't use mouse poison because if you poison a mouse, you're going to end up poisoning an owl, or a hawk, or a fox, or a coyote. So instead of mouse poison, use a mouse trap. And you can bait these with peanut butter, and you set them, 
And when the mouse takes the peanut butter, the trap snaps and kills the mouse immediately. And you don't end up poisoning the mouse, which could poison the owl. So that is something you can do for owls right in your own home. And whenever we have a mouse in the house, this is what we use, mouse traps. So this owl, luckily, someone found him and brought him to the wildlife clinic and they fed him clean food with no poison and they gave him medicine to get rid of the mouse poison in his body and eventually he recovered and that's when we adopted him. All right, question here. That is bias. Does he what? It is spires. Does he eat spiders? Probably not so much, but a little owl would eat spiders. A big owl wouldn't really eat spiders that much, but little screech owl might, or a saw wet owl, yeah. Question here. What, what, uh, wait, okay. do they eat mice? Oh yeah, mice are one of their prime foods, yeah. Do they eat, um, Rats? Oh yeah, they like rats. He liked too much the rats. What's it? Say it again. He liked too, too much the rats. Do they chew on them? He, he liked too much the rats. Oh, they watch them? Well, they watch them to catch them. They would like to catch them and eat them. Yeah, they would watch them to catch them. Yeah. Do, do they um eat birds? Yes. Yes, they eat a lot of different things. What, what, how owls can fly? Well, flying is kind of like swimming through air. So they use their wings to swim through air. So when they're flapping, they're pushing air, much like you would push water if you were swimming in a, in a swimming pool. And so that's what flying is like. It's like swimming through air. Yeah, what color eyes does this owl have? Black and yellow. And great horned owls are our biggest permanent resident owl here in Lawrence. That means they're here year round. They don't migrate. The big one coming out next is the eagle owl. Now, here's what he might do. If you're quiet, He'll probably hoot for you. So let's listen carefully. And I think he will, he hooted for the second graders and they were really quiet, so he hooted. So let's see if we can get him to hoot for the first grade. So let's listen. Oh, he's hooting, listen. He just hooted once. Give him a wing flap. That was awesome. You guys were nice and quiet. So let's all try that call. Woo. Go ahead. One more time. Woo. Good job. So this owl, you will not see flying around Lawrence. This owl is from Europe and Asia. So countries like Japan, China, Russia, Italy, Germany, Portugal, Spain. That's where you'll see owls like this. This is called a Eurasian eagle owl. He's closely related to the great horned owl that you just met. And what color were the eyes on the great horned owl? Yellow and black. What color are his eyes? Orange and black. Now he, he's a male. He's about to turn 18 in April, and he could live to be 55 or 60 years old. So he can live a long time. 
All right, question here. Why are the mouths under here? Well, you're looking at his throat, and that's sometimes when he hoots, you'll see the throat puff out, and that's he's forcing air through his throat to make the hooting sound. Yeah. You can't touch him, though. Please do not try to touch him. Um, we can't let you touch each owl. But we'll get you nice and close. He is a male. He weighs just under five pounds. We have a female at home, and what's kind of remarkable is she weighs twice his weight. She weighs 10 pounds. So she's much bigger than he is. The girls are bigger, stronger, and heavier. All right, I think we have a question here. Do you have a question? Where were they born? He was hatched in a zoo in New York. So he was hatched in a zoo in New York. What's his hatch day, Marsha? April? 11th. April 11th. So on April 11th, that will be his hatch day, and he'll turn 18. Wow. All right. Question over here. But what do they eat? Well, he can eat anything the other owls eat. He also could take down a badger. He could take down large rabbits called hares. He might even be able to knock down a baby deer called a fawn. A baby deer, yeah. And so he also eats snakes, squirrels, mice, hedgehogs, things like that. Why do the owls have big heads? That is a great question. Why do they have big heads? Well, a lot of the bulk of their head is feathers. They have very puffy feathers. But you'll notice how big their eyeballs are. That takes up a lot of space in their head. So the big skull is to give room to have big eyeballs, which work really well in low light at night. So I think the big head is all about the big eyes. Yeah. All right. I'm going to end up with one more question right there. Maybe I can reach you with the microphone. Can you come forward a little bit? How much pounds is that owl? How much does he weigh? He weighs four and a half pounds. Yep. His wingspan... Wingspan is about four and a half feet. So we unfortunately are out of time. You've had some great questions. And your assignment now is when you go home to watch and listen for owls in your neighborhood. Because if you have trees in your neighborhood, you're going to potentially see owls. And also look for those crows as they fly over on their way to the roost in Lawrence. Thank you, teachers. Thank you, students. Happy owling.